So what I really like about this Dream Quest PC is you've got two Ethernet ports and three HDMI ports. If you wanted to set this up as a server or a firewall, you're all set. If you wanted to use this as just a media PC, set it up to three external monitors, set it up to your TV, you've got all the ports that you will ever need. For how inexpensive this is, this is really impressive. Let's have a closer look at the computer. The user manual tells you how to install an additional hard drive. Little warning here about windows updating on first boot so just let it run while it boots for the first time comes with this mini screwdriver and i'm not really sure what this is for also has an hdmi cable and a power supply impressively it has two ethernet ports three hdmi ports and four usb 3.0 ports and a micro sd port and on the front you get the power button let's have a look inside and see what we can upgrade so in the back you have a slot for an additional hard drive, SATA hard drive, here's the cord for it. Looks like the CPU is under all these heat sinks and then you do have a cooling fan. Pretty small, I imagine that's going to be quiet. And here's your NVMe. As far as upgrades go, it looks like I won't be upgrading any RAM. The main thing you do is just add an additional hard drive. Overall, pretty quick and easy to take apart if you do want to add that additional hard drive. Alright, let's boot this for the first time. Dream Quest. And so it is booting into Windows 11. I will go ahead and finish the setup for this and I will be right back. So this is something interesting. Usually it asks you to sign in with an online account in this version. It's just asking for a username and password. So it's just going to have you create a local user. So if you want to log in with your account, you're going to have to do that later, apparently. So I've got Windows 11 Pro installed. I'm going to run some antivirus and install software, and I will be back after that to check out some benchmarks. All right, I've got things mostly set up. So I've ran some Geekbench scores. You can see the scores here, but let, let's have a look. So it's the Intel N95. We're talking a low power processor here. We're not really expecting the fastest speeds. If we look at the GPU score again, not really the fastest speeds. That's not really what this is built for. This is just kind of a low power, inexpensive mini PC. So let's see what this can do. I think the first thing most people want to try is how well does this work in Chrome? Like, let's say if I open up a million tabs, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go to a bunch of useless websites. All right, so I'm just going crazy on the tabs. This looks good. We'll, we'll stop here and open some of these up. Ooh, <laughs> rotating sandwiches. We've got lots of tabs open, some websites. Uh, I don't know what all these websites are. Some of them don't seem to exist or are not secure. Uh, maybe the random website option was not the best option. Overall, just opening up a ton of tabs is not an issue here. Let's do a quick speed test. All right, fast.com. So my internet is capped at about 230 megabits per second, getting about 170 here. So the Wi-Fi on this, not an issue. It goes about as fast as it can. All right, I've got a Blender file open. So it's not completely smooth. This is a fairly complex Blender file, but yeah, this, this is totally workable. So a Blender file like this, not bad. Let, let's try something way more complex. All right, so th this is definitely a complex Blender file. I'm trying to zoom in. You don't see much now because of how choppy it is. So if you're needing to do graphic stuff, 3D rendering, it's going to work for some of the basic stuff, but something complex like this, no, not really. All right, let's try a benchmark test. This is a pretty old benchmark test, but it gives me a general idea if this will work for a lot of the games games out there or not. And yeah, judging by how choppy this is, this really obviously is not going to be a gaming PC. So frames per second, we're getting about eight. Pretty choppy. All right. Well, what about multimedia? That's the other thing most people are going to do is just jump onto YouTube. Let's try a 4K video. Ah, Norway looks like a great place to go visit. All right. That is some beautiful landscapes. Let's full screen this. So YouTube's going to run on just about any PC, but on this one, it is working really great. Let's just scroll through. Let's see how snappy that is. So the Wi-Fi speed, YouTube, yeah, not going to be a problem. Oh man, now I really want to go to Norway. Let's try some Rocket League. 
All right, we're getting about 16 to 18 frames per second. Not really what I would consider playable, really anything under 30 frames per second. I mean, most people are going to say 60 frames per second. Yeah, it works. You could you could play games on this, I guess, if you wanted to, but it's not going to be a great experience. Now, if you do an old school game like Never Putt, on the other hand, this is going to work without any issue. This is a good classic open source game. Hole in one. I'm amazing. Way to go myself. This was sent to me so I could make this video. So the N95 processor, this is a low power, inexpensive processor. What you get with that is you have great functionality for doing basic basic things like multimedia, a ton of browser tabs, just general computer usage. It's not really powerful enough for gaming, video editing, heavy graphics editing, or anything like that. But what's really cool about this is this is perfect for setting up for a server if you want to set up a firewall, PFSense, or if you want to set up something like Plex or Jellyfin and put all your multimedia on this. Really nice that you can put an extra hard drive in there. So you could put in a large hard drive, put all your media files on that then just run plex on this thing and this could be your tv box and run everything you need to for your tv another thing that's really nice about this is i have not heard the fan come on at all now i don't know if that means it just hasn't come on or if when it comes on it's just super quiet but overall no matter what i've done with this even running the complex blender files or running benchmarks or doing games i never heard anything come from this so if you're looking for a mini pc that's quiet this thing is a impressively quiet. Overall, what I really like about this is just how versatile this is. Perfect as just an everyday use computer or as a server or something like that. Thanks for watching.